Every so often, I come across cocktails that are modern classics, things that have become so unanimous and ubiquitously understood throughout the mixology industry that everybody knows about them. And then every so often, I find something that somehow defies everything you would expect to see on a regular menu, and it's one of the best things I've ever seen. <laughs> That's today's drink in the Tunnel Vision by Mike Perez of Death & Co. on today's episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. Hey there, hi there, hi there, my name is Michael, welcome to Mike's Hard Reviews. I am a private events bartender, currently available for hire, and a home mixologist. And today we're going to look at a Death & Co. modern class, well maybe not a modern classic, but a modern craft cocktail, weird, absolutely weird, batshit fucking crazy variation called the Tunnel Vision. The Tunnel Vision is a pina colada riff invented by Mike Perez in 2022, uh, while he was working at the Death & Co. location in LA. It is a pina colada variation that uses a combination of carrot eau de vie, freshly pressed carrot juice, and coco lopez, which is a cream of coconut, as a means of sort of emulating the flavor of carrot cake, and is a remarkably fascinating variation on the tiki platform that you probably wouldn't have expected. I myself definitely <laughs> didn't. Uh, having tried it now, I'm very, very impressed with it. I'm very happy to share it with you today. The cocktail was invented in 2022 uh, and is actually based off of a cocktail that had previously existed uh, at a place called Sunny's Hideaway, which is another LA bar that closed some time after, in 2022, after COVID-19, like with many bars, wiped it off the face of the planet. Mike was working at the bar at the time along with another bartender by the name of Edward Garcia, um, and the two of them worked out a cocktail that included carrot and Coco Lopez, and it tasted like carrot cake, and Mike essentially wanted to do the same thing again, but revisited and a little zhuzhed up. Uh, unfortunately, Sonny's Hideaway, like I said, is closed, but the two of them did end up moving over to Lost Property Bar, another LA bar that may or may not have the entire bartending team of Sonny's Hideaway on their staff, or at the very least did. Ed R still works there, and Mike now works at Death & Co., but really, probably not gonna find this drink on either of their menus. <laughs> it appears to have uh, been put on the menu of the Death & Co. Denver location for a time, and was probably served seasonally in LA for some time, so good luck finding it at either one of those. Carrots are out of season. Have fun. <laughs> in any case, the two of them came up with the root cocktail for this at Sunny's Hideaway. It made its way to Death & Co. where the concept was actualized. And just two weeks ago on Death & Co.'s Instagram page, they touted this as sort of like a summer summer refreshing pina colada drink, and uh, I'm really glad to show that they're giving it some love, because it's really, really good. <laughs> now, you've probably heard me mention that name several times now. You're thinking, Death & Co., what exactly is that? Um, and why is that such an important thing to mention? Well, Death & Co. is one of very many, well, not very many, but I guess one of the titular or eponymous or important places to come out of the craft cocktail revolution that was initially started by people like Sasha Petroske, may he rest in peace, uh, Audrey Saunders, Timothy, or Toby Maloney, and Dale DeGroff. This sort of reinvention of cocktail culture has allowed for gastronomic invention to occur in the sphere of drinking, when previously drinking had become sort of relegated to dance clubs and hotel bars and sleazy dive bars. The sort of revitalization of a classiness, whether or not it was modern or, you know, uh, traditional, was brought about through this revolution, this cocktail renaissance under which we are currently existing. And Death & Co. is a location to have opened up 2006-2007 uh, with their first location that has fully and completely embraced the notion of reinventing cocktail culture and what cocktails can be. They are specialized entirely in producing a modern, sleek, and nightlife embracing environment in each of their locations that carefully take caters to a craft industry patron, I suppose, and they are completely and totally invested in the notion that this is a thing that should be not only exi in existence, but common, <laughs> per se. The name of Death & Co, by the way, comes from the notion, like there was a saying on their site, it was something along the lines of, those who drink are thought to be, you know, convening with death, or something along those lines. I, can't, I wish I could, I wish I could remember it. It's a, it's a phenomenal quote. They're a very cool place. They've, they've got a whole slew of locations, or four locations all across, the United States in LA, Denver, uh, DC, and New York, and they are 
so cool. I really hope to be able to visit one one day. I haven't had a chance yet. But learning about them vicariously through this, um, the, you know, researching the tunnel vision, uh, I'm very, very excited to share with you guys a super fascinating and interesting creation. There is a bit of an issue with showing you how to make this cocktail though. Uh, that issue is the notion of specialty ingredients. Uh, and I'm not gonna lie, there's a reason why you probably won't find this on a menu anywhere right now. <laughs> Let me break it down for you step by step. In total, there are really four ingredients to this cocktail that I think are going to be difficult for some people to find. And I'm going to go from least involved to most involved because frankly, <laughs> they're, <laughs> oh man, this was annoying. <laughs> the first ingredient you'll need to source is cream of coconut. What Mike Perez uses specifically is Coco Lopez, which I have re-bottled here. Coco Lopez is just the standard of cream of coconuts you can find in most larger scale supermarkets, but not necessarily everywhere. In fact, just recently I was watching a Booze on the Rocks video with uh, David Edwards, who's up in Toronto, Canada, I think, uh, and he actually can't get Coco Lopez. I'm gonna refer to his recipe, which you can get in the top right corner of the screen right now, um, if you wanted to make that at home. My personal advisory though, do two to one sugar with a couple drops of coconut extract to beef up the flavor and make it closer to actual cream of coconut, because. He uses a one-to-one -one spec, and I've never liked those, but then again, do as you will, it's your choice. The next most intensive ingredient you'll need to source is some freshly made carrot juice. Now, freshly made is a pretty dead giveaway that you're gonna have to do this by yourself, most likely, but it's not entirely impossible that a place like Trader Joe's or Whole Foods would have a shelf-stable, ready-to-drink uh, carrot juice on their market. Obviously, I couldn't go that route, so let me tell you how I made this one. <laughs> I took about a pound of baby carrots that were freshly washed and had any of their weird rough parts cut off or trimmed away. Uh, put those into a blender and then covered that up with just enough water to like barely hit the top of the carrots, just enough to cover them and give it a substrate to work within. I blended that until it was as close to liquid as possible, put it through a fine mesh sieve to catch the larger particulate, and then bottled it directly into a sterilized 750. I don't have like weight or volumetric measures for any of that stuff, so it, it is kind of a thing you're just gonna have to eyeball, at least if you wanna make what I made. I mean, the fortunate benefit is that this is a relatively cheap thing to make, it's just time intensive. It takes time to, to do something like this. And unfortunately, because it's a handmade product, there's no stabilizers or preservatives in it, uh, it'll be bad in like five days. So small batches are ideal. <laughs> have, have fun with it, figure out what balance works for you. I went for something that was very heavy on carrot, obviously, to sort of embrace their flavor and their natural earthiness and natural sweetness. Um, I'd recommend doing that. Next up is the base spirit of the cocktail. I mentioned that it was a pina colada, and that does mean that it has rum in it, but that's actually not its base spirit. The base spirit for a uh, tunnel vision is actually Linny Aquavit, which is a specific manufacturing and distillation of Aquavit that is made, I think, in, uh, oh God, Norway? Yes, Norway, product of Norway. <laughs> and is then aged in sherry barrels and uh, on, on a boat that crosses the equator twice, apparently. It's kind of a stupid thing, <laughs> but it does make a difference because um, this partic particular Aquavit, as a result, has those traditional notes of caraway and like star anise that you would find in any other Aquavit, but it also has this nice barrel char, a light vanilla note to it, and because sherry is not like whiskey uh, or other aged spirits like rum that has like a certain kind of character to it, it provides a different, more dry flavor. Uh, like I would say like almonds or um, like stone fruit in the total absence of sweetness. It's really fascinating and it's a very nice modification to a more like readily available Aquavit. This was not that hard to find. The specific Aquavit was pretty easy to find. Tiffany's Wine and Spirits, who I've also talked about a million times on this show, uh, had it on their shelves ready to buy. And I don't know why they did, but they did. And as a result, it was very, very easy to source Depending on the size of your city and your state's local investment in, uh, you know, sort of specialty spirits, quote unquote, um, you could also find something along the lines of this, which is Norden Aquavit. This is a local distillery that comes out of Chelsea, Michigan. Um, and initially, before I bought this bottle of uh, Linny, uh, was what I was using to test out this cocktail. You really do need the aged portion of the Linny to really make this work correctly, but something like this, if this is all you can find, an unaged, more traditional, very boilerplate Aquavit, that'll work just fine. And finally, um, there's a small amount of carrot eau de vie, or carrot-based brandy, in the cocktail, and, um, oh man, oh man. <laughs> this was a process. So, 
I went to Tiffany's, my local specialty spirit shop, expecting them to maybe, if I was lucky, have some on the shelf that I could buy, or at the very least, some that I could order. I looked on the shelf through all their Aquavits, did not find one. I looked through all of their other um, specialized eau de vies and brandies and palinkas and things, didn't find one there either. Inevitably, somebody saw me staring at this shelf of specialty spirits that have been imported from all, all areas of the world that are across an ocean, and says, hey, what are you looking for? And I'm like, this is gonna sound really stupid but I'm looking for a carrot brandy. And he went, what? <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't quite like that. It was more like a, excuse me, you say a carrot brandy? I was like, yes. There was a specific brand I gave him called Reisetbauer, which I think is, I mean, obviously it's German, Germanic, um, but they make um, a carrot eau de vie, which is listed in, specifically that one is listed in the uh, recipe for the cocktail. For anyone who's not aware, um, the liquor in the state of Michigan is controlled by a state-owned commissary which means that um, they have to carry it for me to get it and uh, they don't carry it. So got unlucky there. And as a result, I actually couldn't find an alternative in time from like a different manufacturer that I might have been able to get uh, in time because I honestly, the bottle was written in Romanian. It was a Romanian carrot brandy and I, I didn't know how to source it. It was insane. So instead I went about um, making my own. <laughs> For legal reasons, I need to state that I did not home distill a spirit. <laughs> That's very illegal. <laughs> I used uh, more common and completely legal purposes to make this, something that I call carrot faux de vie. And uh, I'm gonna say that again, faux de vie. If you're not looking at your screen right now, please look at the screen. I'm putting it up in text. I'm very, very happy with this play on words. The concept of a faux de vie is one that I'm still working on and the recipes are still in progress, but essentially it is an infusion process that involves macerating the flavor of some ingredient, like a root or a vegetable, whatever you need, that would normally be used to distill a spirit rather than simply flavor one. And through that process, you sort of emulate the character of that spirit without needing to actually distill it. It's an approximation, but one that I think is actually relatively close. In essence, the idea is that a lot of these eau are very, very, very intensely flavored like the thing they're made from. Um, they just carry so much of their essences that it's almost as if they taste more like that thing than the thing itself does. Like St. George's Pear Brandy tastes more like pears to me than actual pears do. I mean, obviously that's, you know, an, an, an ineffectual thing, but it's what it seems like. That was the frame of reference for this. The idea was to just make an infused spirit that came as close to tasting as if it was made out of what you're flavoring it with, rather than just being an infusion. It's still something I'm working on. There's a lot of gastronomic science going into this, but um, it took four days, <laughs> three, four days, something like that. The source ingredients, uh, get the infusion started, um, you know, and then and then macerate it and strain it and filter it to take as much of the large particulate out. As you can see, this is significantly more clear than our carrot juice. This was actually put through filters to sort of rectify it and help keep it preserved. I have no idea how long this will last on a shelf or in the fridge. Um, it is a specialty thing I'm still working on, but we're gonna need this. Or if you're if you're willing, just live in a different state and go to a good liquor store like Astor Wines, because Astor Wines has all this stuff. They're in New York. If you're in New York, you're not gonna have a problem with any of this. <laughs> okay, tangent on special ingredients out of the way, let's go ahead and make a tunnel vision by Mike Perez. Okay, so to make a tunnel vision, we have to combine our ingredients into a shaker, because it is a shaken cocktail. And to begin, I'm gonna start off with three quarters of an ounce of cream of coconut. Coco Lopez is the standard, it's really good stuff, and it's got the right amount of sweetness to it that you need. Gonna come behind that with half an ounce of some freshly squeezed lemon juice, just enough acidity to bring things back. Next up, we'll do one and a half ounces of our freshly pressed, or I guess freshly made, however you choose to do it, carrot juice. We'll come behind that with just a quarter of an ounce of our carrot O, or in this case, pho de V. It's insane how much like carrots this smells. Uh, it smells more like carrots than carrots do. <laughs> Gonna come behind that with half an ounce of a blended white rum. Specifically, Mike Perez uses Probetus, so if you can get that, go for it. I'm going to use Gunroom Two Ports, which is a blend of Dominican and Jamaican rums. 
And then finally, our star of the show, one and a half, or excuse me, one and a quarter ounces of Lenny Aquavit. We need to go ahead and give this a shake. I'm going to do so by using just one cube of ice and a cocktail spring. Actually, I want to try and froth that carrot juice as much as possible uh, and prevent too much dilution because this is going to get served over ice. We cap that up, tap that down, and shake for 10 to 12 seconds. Technically, something like a poke glass or a snifter is appropriate here, but I actually like the aesthetics of serving this over uh, very small pebble ice in a Collins glass. Just the kind of verticality of it is, is fun to me. Take that glass and fill it up with some pebble ice and grab our cocktail and just double strain that right in. Gonna top that, just a little bit more ice. And now we need to grab a garnish. In somewhat hilarious fashion, it's definitely meant to look like a carrot itself because we're gonna grab a couple of mint sprigs here and garnish the drink with those. Got a nice little squeeze to express the oils. Stick that down next to our ice. And there you have, ladies and gentlemen, a tunnel vision. Alrighty, with our station cleaned up, we can go ahead and give our tunnel vision a taste. Like I said, I, I love the visual appeal of this because the sort of verticality of it makes it look kind of like a weird circular carrot, which is perfect for me. I'm gonna grab a reusable straw here, put that down next to the mint so we get that in our nose, and then we'll go ahead and give it a taste. Cheers. Oh, dude, come on. <laughs> oh man, that is so good. Oh man, it's so fascinating. <laughs> There's a really odd thing, and maybe it's just me. I've described this to other people, and nobody seems to really completely agree with me. But I personally think that carrot tastes not unremarkably similar to orange in the, in the sense that it is similarly sweet. There's like a a kind of hit, like the, it's just the, mm, it's so hard to describe. <laughs> if orange had zero acidity to it and just happen to be slightly more earthy. I feel like carrots are that. And maybe it's the association with the color, but there's this, just this kind of like earthy creamsicle-ness to this that is so dominant. And maybe it's the combo of the carrots and the lemon doing that for me. It is wonderful. <laughs> there's an obvious creaminess from the Coco Lopez that is bringing in this delicious and robust coconut flavor that as Mike, Mike and Ed are suggested when they made the cocktail originally in 2019 and now in 2022, or back then in 2022 now, I guess, um, it does actually taste like carrot cake in combination with the carrot. It's, it's kind of wild. <laughs> and obviously that's reinforced by the sort of um, botanicals from the Aquavit and the Aquavit's aging that's bringing in this like nice, gentle vanilla note. I think you could reinforce that by using something like an aged rum, like an aged Dominican, because that wouldn't necessarily affect the color negatively, um, but it would provide a nice, rich, sugary character that I think would be nice here. I don't know what blends of rum are in Probitas's blended white rum varietal, um, but I doubt it's Jamaican because the Jamaican rum is coming through really loudly here, and that's not a bad thing, believe me. I fucking love Jamaican rum, but it is pretty loud. It's just so good. <laughs> it's smooth and creamy. That little bit of acidity from the lemon is like tanking its way through this and making it just very cohesive and have a nice structure to it. It's 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 a health nuts pina colada, I guess, for lack of a better phrase. One of the weirdest things I have ever had the pleasure of of making. And I mean that in like a super positive way. To, uh, to Edder and, and Mike out there, if somehow you guys managed to see this, good, good shit. This is like genuinely one of the best things I've ever had. And if I didn't have to make carrot juice in my own carrot eau de vie replacement, I'd probably keep the stuff forward in my bar like all the time. You guys both deserve to be famous for stuff like this. This is incredible. So I haven't done this in a while, but I wanted to cap off this little episode with 
a little bit of a fun, fun fact. I'm not entirely certain if there is any scientific basis behind the notion of carrots being good for your eyes, but the reason why most people colloquially think that, at least, is because it was a lie told to people in World War One and Two, I think. Mostly World War One, Part of the war effort. Let's just call it propaganda, because that's what it is. There was a lot of propaganda in <laughs> World War One era Britain uh, about their fighter pilots as a, as a means of, you know, drumming up support and, and, and keeping people in solidarity with the army. And at the time, rationing was in pretty heavy effect for most regular things people ate, so alternatives for different starches or vegetables had to become available, and one of them, if I'm not mistaken, was carrots. Carrots became a lot more common in in common cooking than they were previously. In order to support that, they put out a bunch of propaganda that said, carrots are good for your eyes. Our pilots take, eat a bunch of carrots so they can shoot down the enemy and, and whatever the fuck, who knows. Those, those crazy Brits. Very interesting story. And one that I actually want to suggest another video for, uh, Max from, uh, uh, I guess technically it's a drinking history episode, but a uh, tasting history, uh, did a video on that where he made carrot cake for his birthday, happy belated birthday, and this is a while ago now, so, you know, whatever, but I, I just, it came to mind as I was researching this video that I had seen that, and I was like, oh yeah, he did talk about that. Go watch that video, it's a lot of fun. And with that, we are coming to the end of our episode, and it's time for yet another reading from the book Crisp Toasts by William Evans and Andrew Frothingham. We moved on into uh, the section on, I think it was action, and it goes as such. May we always have the class to rise and get up off our ass when there are deeds that must be done or novel ways to have fun. Cheers. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. This was definitely a weird modern uh, gastro mixological gastro pub cocktail dive. And it was one that actually taught me a bunch of stuff on how to do anything behind this bar. So um, if you guys learned anything, subscribe and click like, because honestly, I do this a lot. There's always something to glean from these episodes, and hopefully that's coming across to you guys. Um, if not, let me know. I'll do more educational stuff like this. I make a new one of these videos every single Friday, and if you want to, you can click the bell notification down below to sort of keep up with that. But you can also follow me on all of my socials that are either on the screen or have are appearing now, one of the two, where I will post inevitably photos of the cocktails I make and drink, because frankly, um, I just like taking pictures of cocktails. It's it's fun. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And I will see you all in the next episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. Please remember to drink responsibly. I'll see you around. Bye-bye. Oh my god, see you around is a great pun for a carrot-based cocktail. Holy shit, that's so funny. <laughs>